Um, you know the danger of only teaching one side of an exercise is you're going to want him to retrieve. Right, but we also say Hannah. Good, so. good. And that's exactly what you need to share. Because when they have a desire to retrieve, that's great. But if they retrieve everything, that's not good. On the other hand, if you teach them to leave everything, then you have to work like mad getting them to take stuff. And you actually need both things. So we don't ever want to get so into the corner that we have this, but we don't have the other side of it. So it's balance. You turn it on, you turn it off. You got to have that in every exercise you do. Now, one of the things that um, young dogs, now he's not young, Chance is young, Tessa's young, Abby's young. Willow is not young, but she's immature in some of her development. Um, they have to, if you look in the booklet, there you go. If you look in the booklet, you've got all the stages of puppyhood. And it goes right down the line. And it talks about the maturity, levels of maturity. It talks about the development, how they act compared to kids. It follows right true. Um, there's, there's people that start their puppy and they want to train, blah, 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 blah. It hits that four-month period and it is like evil. It's like, but I've been doing all, yeah, yeah, but you've been doing so much stuff, the dog's getting constant attention, which is not all that good. That's kind of her. She's never, she's gone to work with you from the time she's a puppy. She's worked, she's walked the neighborhood, you know, and, and that was fun. Then she became too guardy and we had to back up and do some other things because you had taught her those things, but not the social part of it. Because you had to keep her away because she was rude. So then she got the feeling that people were bad. Now we got to go the other way. And it, it, it works that way. Um, it's just like they have to have X, Y, Z, da, 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 da. If you don't teach this one thing, you got to go back and teach that before you can actually say it's a well-rounded adult. Now, one of the problems when people start, they're very enthusiastic about training the dog to be an adult. It's a baby. So to do too many things as a baby sets the dog up to have unrealistic expectations. You kind of did that with Tessa. You were so enthused to be back in class that Tessa had kind of lost the respect level. She was playing with you and sadly, when they're babies, you can't really put the pressure on them that you need to when they get older. So you're kind of teaching them kind of gradually. Well, these big exercises that'll save their life, you can't give them a pass on those things. So at some point, you need to go beyond being the grade school teacher to the coach. And a lot of people don't ever make that transition. They want to remain the dog's friend and they want to be his cute little baby. Well, then you have a dog that kind of blows you off, always. For that, we need some exercises that up the level of expectation. Now, David is doing a really good job with that dog. Maintaining some of the basic stuff that I taught. Now we pick on David, but truthfully, David does practice and it's very obvious. He makes a, oh, poo you don't. The dog doesn't do that good. So he, you know, well, I don't really train. No, you live it. You live it. 
Dale lives it. He doesn't go home and do hours of practice. Marilyn goes home and does hours of practice. <laughs> because Marilyn enjoys the training part of it. Now, she also has fun, so there's the balance. I wonder who in this room doesn't do a lot of structured work. Who would that be? Anybody know? Raise your hand, Eric. <laughs> okay. Now, when you live in a residential area where you don't have a setup, when you have a nice home that's full of things, it's difficult, especially if you tie the dog with a long line. We won't mention that, though. Um, it requires additional effort that when you have some physical challenges, you really don't quite have the energy to do. Would that be a fair assumption? Yeah, but it's all of us. Um, I was sitting there this morning. Now, it, it's, it's human nature. I was sitting there this morning, and I got to get, Janet's going to come down. We're going to work Sadie. I seldom, if ever, work her here. I work on the attitude she has got to get. So this week, <laughs> we're going to be working. All right. It's not wrong if you're aware and you do have a plan. I have a plan. She's not going to go anywhere till after the first of the year, so I'm not going to sharpen her, really sharpen her up, only to have it watered down because I'm not working it the way it should. I'm no different than any of you. I don't, after I get out of here, I have to force myself to. I don't like to take dogs places because I'm in a hurry. I've dealt with dogs all day long. So when, when it came time to take Far, or not Fargo, Finn on the bus, oh my gosh, it was like pulling teeth. I did not want to go ride the city bus. I did. Kicking and screaming. And we had to ride it three times, didn't we? And we really didn't want to. And then we had to do it with Sadie because we really didn't want to. I've ridden the bus more than I really care to ride the bus. But we have to make ourselves do what we got to do. So if we're having a problem in a certain area, suck it up and do it. Get it over with. Then you've always got it. Do it with the right attitude. You've always got it then. Some of the things I told you to do, didn't really want to do, did them. Because if you don't take the pill, you're not going to get over the problem. Now, Chance has got plenty of attitude. He is not the least bit intimidated. He gets by with a lot of nonsense just because he's cute. And Eric didn't get a dog to be hot shot anything. But Chance knows how to work the system. There's nothing wrong with that. All right. Now when we start moving up to really getting our point across and making it serious, when you called him in out there, Chance, 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 you have to get used to saying words that you mean. You give him suggestions, and that isn't going to cut it. So as the coach, you can't ask him, you tell him. Now the only way you make him believe that is by making him believe that. It's got to be a priority to you or it's talk. I'd really like you to, to pay for this rather than take it home with you the way it is. No, I'd rather not, thank you. I'd really, really rather you drive the speed limit 
I'd really, oh, please don't do that, is going to get you nothing. Now, if it's just your voice you're depending on, you have to get more serious, louder, you better. We don't want to do that. Because then that really does draw negative attention to you. So when you're teaching any of these, they're basically crucial exercises. A weight will save that dog's life. And if it only really does it once, it was still worth doing. If that dog looks at you and says, yeah, right, it's dead. If it runs out in front of a car, it's dead. If your dog slips across the street and it's coming back home and there's a car coming, you better be able to tell it to wait. And the quicker the better. So, as I was just talking about Sadie, she doesn't have any of this stuff yet. Her reasoning for not being taught yet is, I'm going to teach it as, an adult, as a young adult, not as a baby. She's had a childhood that's second to none. She's had a ball. But when she's ready to go to work, I can't have a service dog going out of here that isn't solid. Good. So for most people, they're not that serious until there's a problem. And there has been problems, hasn't there? Because he's not listening to you. He doesn't always come when he's called. He doesn't always, and you laugh at him and kind of fudge around. But some of these things are really super important. Now, when I was getting ready to start the class, Sizzy kind of was walking away from me and I said, wait, and she hit the ground. That's as good as a recall. What's the downside of that? None. So you have to decide when they get about this age, a little over a year, do you really care about the performance or is he just a nice dog? He's not in danger of losing his home. He's a great dog. But you couldn't really, if he got out the gate, you couldn't depend on him. There's where you run into problems. Because he's no longer a baby. He's now a young, an adult, a young adult. And none of us like to be told what to do. When you got to be 21 years old, your mommy didn't boss you around. You took suggestions. You took requests. But you didn't take orders. And that's appropriate. So as a parent, it's my baby, you know, as a parent, you have to mature in your handling before the dog's going to mature in his. So we make a choice at this age, does he ahead of me or am I ahead of him? That's it. Am I maintaining the house for this dog? I'm the one working. I'm the one paying the electric. I'm the one shopping. I'm the one doing everything. What does he do? Demand to eat. Won't quit playing. Bolts outdoors. Huh. <laughs> My dogs don't. I got too many. So it is that serious. Good boy. But immaturity wise, he is a puppy. Um, he, he was raised here, so he knows this stuff. But a puppy is so cute. And they're so soft. And they're so fluffy. And it's all hair, you know. You want to go home and not be in charge of anything. You want to go home, have the dog like you. My dogs sit on my lap too. Okay, I have no problem with that. But when we give a command, we're back to work mode. So we need those words that get you what you want when you need it. 
we need to have commands, have something that means what it means. Now, one of the easiest ways when the dog has blown a couple commands is to change the command. And you don't say the new command unless you fully intend to say the new command. When you do that, you take on a different, you take on the level of the coach. The weight, okay, if you mess up the weight, it's okay. We had a, a woman here, a really nice woman, and she had a little Yorkie, and she wanted Gloria, and she was going to put an obedience title on this dog. I think by the time we finally got that dog doing stays and waits, we had used five different words because she couldn't remember to not compromise the new word. So we had just add a new word. Now in adding new words, you want to make sure that the words you're using make sense. Because if you teach a dog an odd word to get something, then the dog, if, if the dog was ever picked up at the Humane Society or goes to a new home, it, it's a word that doesn't make any sense to most people. And there are people that think it's funny to have weird words, but in reality it would cause the dog to have a problem because nobody else is going to say that. So the best way to teach it is to teach it. Hey, Chancer! Freeze. Good freeze. Now don't stare at him. He's okay with weight, though. He's not either! He didn't do it the other day. He kind of did it. But you didn't like the correction, did you? Well, no, that was fine. Oh, okay. Let's do it again. <laughs> You're not going to win this. Good freeze. Come on, Chance. Now, your attitude takes on that of a coach. Now, you're, you're still nice, but there's no question that what you mean is what you mean. Come on, Chance. Come on. Good. Freeze. Good freeze. Down. Wait. Now, I can combine kind of, but freeze now is his big word. Same concept. I told you, freeze. Now, when I threw in your good weight, he said, oh, I know what weight means, not. He does that already, kind of, sometimes. Maybe, if he's tired. <laughs> Good freeze. Now, he's allowed to ask questions, but he better be prepared for the answer. Well, you know, I was out. So you have to be careful about giving him a pass. You're looking to give him approval. Everybody gets a trophy. I should be able to walk around him taking pictures. Of but him. you have to put some effort forth. You can't not let him wait, not make him do it, and then go out in the park and expect him to do it. That's true. This is a lifestyle. So when you say the word freeze, it's not multiple choice. He's doing pretty good. You stop what you're doing. Yeah, go over there and you address it. You just want, you know, the, pro the computer's programmed. I'm supposed to push this button and it's, no, he's a dog. Yeah. Now, he's an addict. He is an addict. He's addicted to doing the opposite of what you say. He's a young man. And he's competing with you for leadership role in your home. Yeah, my, my mistake is that I expect him to be reasonable and he isn't that. Really? I do. That's what I did. Huh. And, 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 and Did you ever know that, Dale? 
Now, he's explaining to me what I'm just saying to him in a little bit different way. It's exactly right. And this is what happens with very educated people. Eric's not used to grabbing somebody saying, listen here, you're going to straighten up. I mean, it's our world. So it's really easy to give instruction. I'm telling you, I struggle from the same things. But I do it because I'm not going to have my dogs go out and then blow it and then have people, well, that's her dog. She or her dogs don't even do that. I remember when I first, first class I had in this building, we were going to have obedience. You freeze. And I had, I had a woman who taught classes in obedience all over. She's well known. Nice woman. We were friends. We had a whole room full of people. She had a lab. So she's got everybody going around the circle like we used to have the whole building. It was the that and this and the whole thing. Okay, we had a lot of people in here. You freeze. And she put her dog in an STAY down in the middle. The whole night long, she'd give commands, the dog would get up. I told you, STAY. She'd go back and the whole night long, she corrected her own dog. Well, how, how high is the bar for the people you're teaching? <laughs> Good phrase. This is What's what. What's the difference? Because he won't do that for me. Probably because I have two lines on him. Okay. Think? Yeah. Huh. Now, you do, a lot of people do things just like they expect kids to learn to ride a bicycle without training wheels. Okay, you put the training wheels on, the kid rides, all right, then you take them off. Well, the kid falls. So it takes longer to learn to ride the bicycle because you keep taking the lousy training wheels off than if you left the training wheels on. Feels so good when I quit doing this. All those cliches, you freeze. Good freeze. He doesn't know I've changed, does he? Because the line's still attached, I've still got two hands on his collars. So when we take off a collar, when we take the line off, we're taking away his training wheels. Okay, good. I mean, but that's what it is. You're trying to, your expectations are, once he learns it, he should just do it. I sure hope none of the surgeons that have ever done surgery do that. I've read the book. <laughs> You're my first. <laughs> that wouldn't be good. You're not giving him practice. Come on, Chance. Freeze. Now the dog knows W-A-I-T. The dog knows wait. But you've compromised it. Not with me, he says proudly. Huh? With that word, well, you've taught him he can. You know, be home at 10, but midnight's fine. <laughs> you have an invisible flexi lead. <laughs> now, there's nothing wrong with Eric other than he loves this dog. But we have to love the dog enough to do what he needs to succeed. To set the dog up to fail and then blame it on the dog, not nice. Chance, come on, come on. Freeze, freeze! Oh, we can get more serious. Good. He has to know what happens if. Whoa. Good. Hey, you freeze. Now he's tried it twice, hasn't he? The next time he's going to be sorry. 
I'm setting him up to need it. Dance with me. Good boy. Good with me. Freeze. I said freeze. Freeze. I think I killed him. Yeah, that's what he does when he dies. Yeah. Who cares? I used to do that too, and then I got out of stuff. Oh, oh, oh. Quit looking at him. Really? No. He sneaks? Wow. Have you ever had a dog that sneaked? Wow. Now, this comes from a man who's never really had dogs that were trained. They just had dogs. This is very common. Well, I don't want to work it. I just want a dog. The woman yesterday. I just, you know, it's not about me. Yeah, it is. The dog reflects. Chance, come on. Come on. Freeze. Excellent. Now, what's, what's the decision? I holler at you like I'm going to eat you. Or, excellent dog. Because you don't notice the import, you don't notice the good stuff either. He gets attention. So if he's not getting a paycheck for doing the good stuff and he's getting attention for doing the bad stuff, why wouldn't he do the bad stuff? Why that makes perfect sense to me. Chance, come on. Good. Freeze. Nah, 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 nah. <laughs> Because that's what Eric wants. He wants this. But he's got to go through the motions first. So when you see the training videos, it, you can't just say the words and expect the dog to do it. It's a process. This is how he learned wait, only it was not that serious. So by changing the word, cool. Dale changes the word all the time. He's got three different words for her. <laughs> and his dogs have learned to adapt accordingly. Mary Pat, she's got a word, it's karma, which comes back to bite her because it might be she wants her to wait. And <sighs> those are habits we get into. You're not the only one, I just singled you out. He knows he doesn't have to. Oh, poo. What do you do? Now, you better wait. I'll give you such a hit. <laughs> you don't have a lead on him. Well, use it. Now, I probably used it harder than you did. Yeah, I did. And what did I really do? The volume went up. All I did was give him a regular correction. I didn't correct him hardly. Good freeze. Also, you don't practice weights. All you do is use it. Well, your tools are getting dull. You, you worked with foster kids. Would you have 20 of them? Over the years. Yeah. Would you have ever been that inconsistent? Had to have rules and they had to stick to the rules. That's right. Because it just was the way I was. If you let one go, the other ones go too. Now, you have a second dog. If this one, who's the imprinting dog, blows you off, what happens? Well, what's the answer? Don't say it unless you intend to back it up. Good. Now, oh, no, I'm not petting your tummy. Wait. Good. All right. Now, this can cause problems, too. Freeze. Hey! There we go. 
Now, it's a battle of wills, isn't it? Don't even say anything to him. You're lucky. And that's what happens. He knows when that leads off. Well, you taught him. I didn't teach him that. Where in the heck's that bat? There it is. Yeah. <clears throat> Oh, this isn't going to hurt. Get. Get out of here. Get. 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 Get out. Get off. Get. 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 Freeze. Chance. Freeze. Freeze. Good. Now, what did I really do? Nothing. This is where you lose it. You take the lead off and test him. So many people do this. This isn't uncommon. This is what people do. How do you fix that? A knee. See, you treat him like he's your little baby. Deep down inside, he's a criminal. Come here, you. And he's just telling you he's cute. He's not. Come on. Uh-uh. Come on. <laughs> Kaiser's not going to save you. He thinks you're goofy. <laughs> Kaiser, he needs saving. Come here. Now this goes along with the pack lesson. Right here. This is part of it. Because each pack member has to have a good idea that they don't have the choice. So when I can manage a whole room full of dogs, and I have one that does this, I'd never have, a th I'd never have it. So the other dogs are watching this, and this will be Snugs too. The other dogs are watching you deal with this dog. They want to do this too. Leadership 101. You have to be able to handle every member of that pack. Now the nice ones are harder to deal with than the tough ones. You let him. Oh. Now Allison's getting a new puppy. This is for Allison. This is, this is just the way it is. New puppy. Now, even though Tina lives with, and she likes them, so they're still there, family members who don't necessarily do what she does. I do too. All right. But if you have this and they don't cross you, no matter who comes in your home, you have to take the responsibility because you're the ones going to be living with them. In this day and age, you make your choice if your dog really does this. That's great. If you don't give the command, you let those people have whatever dog they want. But if you are telling the dog to behave and everybody else is allowing it to be awful, you're really compromising yourself by trying, you know, to holler at the dog and then the person telling them no. Yes, I'm sure you have and it's Whether something... He needs to have a lead on or not. Yeah, I know. Nobody's taking that lead off. He would fit right in, wouldn't he? Because there's something about that lead. We just don't like that. Why? It's a lead. It allows you to step on it. It allows you to have 
psychological control over him. Look at this. But you're making that distinction. Come on. Freeze. Freeze. You got to get beyond that or you'll never have anything. You have made it a, almost a necessity now by not using it. Now, the, you need to go back to using it. End of story. After about a month of him being changed, and he will be. Now, this is important because I have the Jack Russell puppy in there. If this dog is teaching her the wrong way, you're going to have a real problem. Well, I know. Once the dog is more mature, he's still a young puppy, you know, just put up with it. That's all you can do. Um, just say, I told you so every time the dog gets into whatever, but the dog's going to pay the price. That's the way that goes. But once the dog starts to get more dependable, you put a honking big heavy snap on the dog and a very light line. So the only thing the dog feels is the snap. Then you begin cutting pieces off. So pretty soon all the dog has is the snap and the dog behaves. But you cannot do it until after you're not having any problems with the line. Now this is the point at which People want to start trusting the dog too much. He's immature. He's not a dependable worker. He'd be fired. Because he's a nice guy, but you can't trust him. You don't want that. You need a dog that's trustworthy. And that's by leaving the line on until you no longer need it. When I used to, well, when I could walk better, we'd go out in the field and I'd tie, I'd put a binder twine on the heavy snap by the time we got ready to do that. Dog's dragging twine. By the time we got back, you, dog didn't even know it disappeared, but it'd wear off. Dog come back with a snap with this frayed little piece of, and I'd just let him wear it. By that time, dog's following you everywhere. It is a smart thing. That makes sense. I know. It's doing it. Dale played a little of those games too. He trusted them too soon. We all do. I trust dogs beyond and then I see what I got to fix. I don't do it for a long period of time though. One time and they prove to me what I need to work on. <laughs> Chance, come on, come on. Freeze. Much better. Now your voice doesn't have to be loud. But this is a practice thing, isn't it? It has to be practice. Well, you've got to, now, I'm teaching a class. You can talk on the phone. Freeze. If you walk when you talk. I talk, I mean, if I wasn't tied to the desk, I would walk when I talked. Nothing wrong with that. You're in the park. You're talking to somebody. Freeze. Oh, I'm training the dog. Anybody that calls me is used to me interrupting a phone call with a dog. <laughs> yeah, I don't, and I don't apologize. I stop sitting when you said that. Yeah. <laughs> you settle, <laughs> Eric. <laughs> well, thank goodness. I'll just say freeze from now on. But you got to look at it this way. You're doing it for the dog, not to the dog. Yeah, well, that's helpful because it, it does get really frustrating. Well, everybody needs to hear this once in a while because as they start to, Marilyn, as they start to do good, you start to get too impressed with them. Okay, they're doing good for a little kid. They're not doing good for an adult that needs to get off its butt and do something. Now this is important because if you can't do this, 
You can't do the big stuff. You, you, you cannot move on and be happy if you can't get beyond here.